So again, I'd like to welcome everyone and thank you all for taking part in our AGM and RepSpark education series. RepSpark is a gold level vendor partner and sponsor of the AGM. I'd also like to welcome AGM vendor partner LinkSoul, who is joining in the presentation today. I'm excited to see on here today as many from the company side as the club side of the golf industry joining us. For those maybe not so familiar with the AGM, the AGM is an international association dedicated to strengthening golf merchandising profession and the industry through our educational platforms. These offerings would not happen without the support of our vendor partners like RepSpark and LinkSoul. My right hand, Jennifer, will put several links in the chat for anyone wanting to learn more about the AGM. From the vendor partner program to the upcoming retail conference and product preview at the PGA show, yes, live in person in Orlando, to our exciting certified retail manager accreditation program. Now on to our presenters for today. I'd first like to introduce Morgan. On my screen, she's up in the top row. I don't know where she is on yours. Morgan runs a wholesale and marketing operations at LinkSoul, having joined the company to help grow and develop their B2B relationships. Prior to joining LinkSoul, she was a buyer for two different country clubs for five years, building relationships with brands that were a good fit for the clubs. Based on that experience, she's seen how many brands how many brands have grown their B2B business and facilitated a personalized experience for buyers through using these B2B platforms. Link Soul, as I mentioned, is also a member of the AGM and a huge fan of RepSpark. And also with us is Megan, the co-founder and president of RepSpark, a leading B2B platform for the wholesale e-commerce connecting buyers and brands. RepSpark is a vendor partner for the AGM and also a supporter of the PGA. Megan and Morgan, the floor is yours. Perfect. Thank you, Tracy, so much. I'm going to share my screen here. We have a couple slides. Um, but everybody who's on the call, there is a good mix of um, pro shops, of retail buyers, and of brands. So um, we will pause several times to see if there's feedback or questions. So we really encourage everybody to participate. This is more of a working talking panel than um, some of the previous education series have been where we've just kind of been presenting. Um, so with that, I will share my screen and um, hopefully this will work and um, we can make this a presentation. Give me one sec here. All right, well, perfect. So let's hop right into education series number three. Um, we already introduced Morgan and myself on the panel. Um, and then Tracy, of course, will be moderating and asking questions and picking up questions from the chat as well. Um, we're gonna talk through some ways that um, brands and sales teams can be empowering retailers for success, um, really looking at ways for education, collaboration, and advice. Um, really focusing on how B2B can help um, all sides, all parties involved here visualize their um, buys. And again, we'll be pausing and asking questions. Um, so please make this an interactive panel. Um, Morgan's already been introduced, but Link Soul um, as a brand has been in the golf area for a very long time. Um, it originates from the term link soul, and it's an expression of the connection we found through years of playing golf. Um, so if you haven't heard of link soul, look them up. They are a very great brand. But let's move into empowering retailers for success. Um, so what are some tips for a successful season? Um, and I will be asking uh, Morgan as well as other people on the call. Um, what kind of value are retailers are expecting now from your brand? What kinds of support do the retailers need from the reps? As we know, um, things are changing so much now towards moving towards digital. Um, people are just having issues with inventory and being able to see what's available. Buyers and retailers are, it's a whole new world as far as getting um, enough inventory in your shop. Um, so what kinds of support do you as retailers need from your sales teams on these different brands? And how can reps ensure successful seasons for your retailers? And not just the reps, but a lot of times it's the brand, the brand managers, the merchandising teams, et cetera. So 
as we move through at once uh, holiday season right now into pre-book season, um, whether you're gonna be on site at trade shows or virtually involved with trade shows, we really need to be asking how we as brands and facilitators of digital platforms and sales teams can be making sure that our retailers are successful. Um, so I'm gonna turn it over to you, Morgan. What are some things that Link Soul is doing um, to make sure that the retailers and those buyers are having a successful season? Um, thank you, Megan. Um, I would definitely say it's it's been very helpful to have the digital platform for our retailers and our reps out there to get our product in front of people without even personally bringing yourself in front of them. Um, so that's helped us do make catalogs. Um, like you said, it's been very crucial for us, for our reps and our retailers to be able to see like what's available like right now with everything kind of the shipping world crazy for everybody. Um, we've really utilized both sides of it, being able to hop on there and just see like, okay, this is what we have now. This is what's coming. Um, being able to track when stuff is delayed, the dates in RepSpark always reflect that. Um, so we've just been trying to stay on top of that kind of stuff with our retailers and knowing this is what we have now, this is what's changed and just really build that relationship because everyone is going through the same thing. So the more upfront and honest and good solid communication that has been very helpful in the time we're all in. Perfect, thanks Morgan. Um, for any other brands who are on the um, call today, are there certain things that you find yourself as a brand doing or initiatives that you have um, that you have found to uh, be really successful when working with your retailers and then in turn making sure that they're successful? So if you have anything you'd like to share um, with the group, that would be great. Um, as Tracy said, I think there's a um, raise your hand as well, or if you just want to put your name in the chat, we can unmute you also and I can call on you. Um, but for brands, or I guess since no one's really participating yet, any retailers, any retailers, um, you know, what are some things that, that, you know, would be, you would love to see that, that brands could be doing to make you more successful again, during this at once crazy holiday season and moving into, um, the pre-book, you know, pre-trade show, or it used to be the pre-trade show season where the bookings are happening and um, orders are being placed. So kind of both sides, guys, anything that you could share on the brand side that you're doing or anything on the retailer side that you hope brands are doing? Um, Megan, I'm going to, my cat has a question. <laughs> <laughs> When the, the um, Mor or Morgan mentioned um, updating the website with all the shipping and challenges that we're dealing with, how, how is that updated? Is that something that the vendors do themselves or is that a RepSpark function or how does that occur and how current is that? No, that's a great question. Um, it really depends on how we are integrated with each brand um, and what kind of um, data system they have. So an ERP system. Um, and, and how often we can sync. So Link sold on an ERP system called Apparel Magic, and we sync every 30 minutes. So that inventory is as up to date as 30 minutes ago for someone, a brand like Link Soul. And then RepSpark also deletes or decrements um, each, each um, style, color, size in between each of those inventory syncs. Um, some of our brands are on Shopify, something like that. Um, again, we would be syncing every 30 minutes. Um, so it really depends on, it's called an ERP system that the brand's on and how that integration works. But again, we like to do it. 30 minutes is, is the longest. And again, RepSpark will decrement in between that. So we can trust as a, a buyer at a club that that is pretty current that's on there when we go on Correct. that site, which is really good to know because sometimes you worry, when was the last time? I mean, I look at websites and they haven't been updated in years, right? But this is very current. So. Yeah, I think it's good for our retailers to see the current. And then I also know it's really huge for our reps because they're in RepSpark all the time and they're not 
don't really have access to our apparel magic system that we use. Um, so it being that current is great for our reps and our retailers because they all have access to that. Other questions for anybody? Maybe Lisa. another um, question that- oh, Lisa, Lisa's, okay. got a, Lisa's got a question. She Thanks. raised her hand. She did. Lisa, go ahead. So I have had um, some success with Summit Golf Brands. They give us 3% off when we place our orders through RepSpark, which for the most part covers our shipping, give or take, depending on, you know, if it's a special order or whatever. So uh, I was curious, I, I really appreciated it and it has uh, incentivized me. That's probably the one thing that has incentivized me initially to start using RepSpark. I know I'm super dependent on it, but um, I was curious if any other of the other brands thought that that might um, be something that would be worthwhile or if y'all have thought about that. I think you probably just gave several of them the idea. <laughs> I was about to say, we haven't thought about that, but now that sounds like a great plan. <laughs> yeah, so they get so they give 3% off um, if you go on and do it yourself. And obviously, you know, that is worthwhile for them as well. Absolutely. We do. It's 50, 50 us like struggling to get our brands to like use our B2B because we've had accounts obviously for a long time, even before we started using rep spark. So some people don't want to get on board with it and they like talking with their rep. So we have been trying to come up with ways to incentivize people to use it. So I appreciate I, that. <laughs> I can say from experience once once we get used to it, I've gotten to the point where I don't even, you know, I can just go on and do it without even talking to anybody. And it's just so much easier than going back and forth with the email. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And then for any, um, just, I'm going to pipe in for a minute too. And then Lisa, you did a perfect segue into my next question, but for any of you retailers or um, you know pro shops that are buying with a certain brand on RepSpark, there is that community piece where you um, can go in and request access to the other brands. Um, I think there's like 40 or 50 golf brands now specifically that you can be requesting access um, and have that one login and kind of be toggling between the different brands that you stock within your pro shops, just making hopefully your life even easier um, than it was. So if you do have questions about that, um, you know, again, just kind of put your name in the chat and we can um, send you more information there. Um, but, you know, another question I had was, you know, retailers, besides Lisa, that was a perfect segue, like I said, what are some of the best relationships that you have as retailers with some of your brands or your sales teams? And what made those relationships be so great? Um, obviously, successful, unique, <laughs> great selling product is one thing. But besides the product, are there any um, that come to mind that, you know, particularly stand out? And why do they stand out? And it might be great tips for, like we said, about half the listeners here are brands that, you know, would love to hear what, what make other brands so special. Silence fills the room. Somebody's <laughs> got something to say. Uh, Jose. Yeah. Jose, un unmute yourself and share. Thank you. Yep. No. Um, on that subject, yeah, for me and, and our team here, I mean, we do a ton of corporate business. Um, so for us, you know, having the visuals of images, like, you know, clear visuals of the garment um, and a detailed breakdown of either at once inventory, as well as what might be coming in a few weeks inventory as well. I, I've come to find that that's, that's definitely a benefit and, and, and ease because again, I mean, we may be working with a corporate client that might not be coming for another two, three months. But, you know, when I look through some of these B2B sites uh, that some of our vendors and partners have, some have that option that will tell you, here's what we have in stock. Here's when the next wave of inventory is coming. So for me and my team, we find that to be of value because even though the product might not be available for at once, 
However, if the group's coming in three, four months, then we at least can offer them something that's coming up new. And that helps us uh, immensely with being able to pre-book it, making sure that we can get it and then have it on time for the group's arrival. For those corporate accounts, are you customizing and adding logos to most of those, that, those items as well? Yes. Yeah. I mean, I would say 95% plus of corporate groups that we host at our facility is dual logo merchandise. So not only with our club's logo, but also their company logo as well. That's great. Thanks for sharing. Is there anyone else who has, um, you know, a particular, a, a particular brand or sales team member, or something comes to mind or a particular um, aspect of ordering that, you know, just really tends to make you successful. Um, and then anything else that you could share from the retail side. All right, we will, oh. Oh, Jose's got his hand up again. He's full of ideas today. That's wonderful. Go ahead, Jose. You're muted though. Sorry, I'll touch on that uh, item or that subject while we're on it. Yes, uh, we do, those, those partners of ours that do provide artworks proof with the actual uh, logos on the garment, you know, as a CAD, as a visual, uh, those are definitely a value. It makes the approval process and ordering process much more effective and efficient than when you're having a deal with some sort of CAD that really doesn't illustrate the corporate logos and colors and the right um, coloring guidelines that they may have. So for us, there are a few that we've noticed out there that do provide that service of, you know, once you've selected the garment, you provide them the logo, they'll send you, you know, CADs with the actual logos, images on them. And I'm not talking like an embroidered example. I'm talking just a, more of a CAD image of it that, you know, makes it easier for the client to see the logo placement and what it would look like, uh, which saves a lot of time and, and, and money sometimes being spent on trying to get physical samples of logos for the client to approve and then get the order finalized. So I think that's another added feature that, again, on some of these B2B sites, uh, I think are value. And Morgan, you're you're using the insignia feature as well, correct? Yes, we do um, utilize that feature and kind of go back and forth and color match and make sure all of that. We do that for our customers. <laughs> Perfect. Megan, um, can you maybe explain that a little bit more for people that might not have been on the first two of these to understand what that is? Yeah, sure. So um, if you are ordering from RepSpark in a brand like Link Soul has, um, we call it our big insignia. Um, it's also logo, art, emblem, decoration. It seems like there's about a hundred different um, words for it in this industry. Um, but essentially as a buyer or a sales team member is going through and placing the order, once they select that customer and the product, um, the applicable um, logos for that customer will be displayed to choose from. Um, and sometimes a brand will actually upload logos that could be chosen by any um, customer, like an American flag or Ryder Cup logo or something like that. Um, and then they could go ahead and choose their color options. So whether it's matching or club colors, um, some brands allow the buyers and um, retailers to actually put in notes for exact colors that they would like to have, um, as well as placement locations. So, um, you know, if you choose a vest, the left sleeve wouldn't be available, um, et cetera. So placement location. Um, and then notes and some brands have also allowed the capability to upload new logos through the site as well. So that when that order is received by a brand like Link Soul, they at least have all the information as well as any upcharge that's associated with that logo right on that order. So it's very easy to make one of these um, pads if needed to go back and forth and see exactly what that looks like. Um, and if a CAD's not needed, it's just kind of a standard order with the club logo. All of that information is captured um, and received at order entry, as well as confirmed um, by the person who's ordering that that's exactly what they want. Here's what the upcharge is going to be. So again, it, it kind of 
it's not just shoved into one line of, you know, here's everything. It's very clear on a step-by-step -step process how those, those logos are added. Thanks. Other questions from anyone or comments? Things that you like, that you find with it? I have a question uh, regarding the, the logos are on RepSpark, but they actually don't show on the product as you create it, create it, is that correct? Yeah, you would just create the product and then select your logo, that's correct. The logo placement, right? Yes. Is there any, is there down the road, is there any opportunity or are you guys working on a, so you would actually see the logo on the product? Peter, we are thinking about it. The problem is most um, clubs and brands only have the logo in one colorway, uh, maybe in the club colors or maybe in a black and white. Um, and so to see that on top of a garment is not necessarily gonna be kind of what you chose as your, your color options. Um, so, you know, if you believe that would add value to see um, you know, a single logo with that color over, um, over the product, you know, or overlaid, would that, would that still be beneficial for you to see it, even if it's in a different, you know, color option or, you know, the size might be a little different and you could resize it. I mean, I would love to hear feedback. That's, we've looked into it a couple of different times and, you know, it's never been compelling enough to do it, but if we do believe it is, you know, we could definitely look into that. So I work for uh, the Winston Collection, and we we do a, obviously a tremendous amount of uh, club logos on head covers. And one of the one of the aspects that most of the customers want to see is they want to see the logo on the product. They want to you know see what it looks like on that head cover, whether it be a driver fairway or a hybrid or a putter or mm -hmm. or any product for that matter. You know, in, in different leather accessories, and. Being able to place that on the product, sometimes we find it very important for the customer to see it that way, because they may decide, well, that size is too small for the logo on a duffel bag, or the head, that that logo is too big for the head cover, or you know, there's there's dimensional things that are involved with that as well. Yeah, and I think that's where um, you know you just kind of come to a stopping point of what you can do, because like you said, you know, the logo image that we may have. How does that match up with the dimensions? Because you might put that same logo on different um, sizes. So we would need to have the logo with the sizes to go with the correct, you know, head cover, whether that be a driver or something else. Um, again, we've walked down that path a couple of times. It's pretty complicated because you have to get the coordinates for each, like what is left chest on a shirt? Where would that be? What is that size of logo? Do we just allow you know someone to resize it so they can kind of get the gist of what that might look like? So, um, but to get it you know exactly print ready where someone's accepting it is is you know it's 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 an interesting concept. Okay. Yeah, De definitely not one we're walking away from. Um, we'd okay. love to tackle that because you're not the first one to say that would be you know super helpful to be able to see that. Well, I think it goes back to what Jose was saying a, a bit of, of giving the customer a, a real representation of what the product they're actually going to get. Mm -hmm. uh, because people are so visual these days. I mean, that provides them with an, an overlay of the logo on top of a product, uh, which it, it can be important. Um, you know, for especially maybe not as important for the retailer buying from the vendor, but maybe for the corporate customer or a retail customer that is not as in, in tune to looking at those types of things as often. Mm -hmm. No, understood. Understood, for sure. Anybody else with questions? I'll do, um, this is Eric with RepSpark. I guess it's okay to ask questions to the to the buyers? Yeah, absolutely. I'm really curious how you identify, how new um, brands are identified. So if um, you have a merchandise shop and you have shelf space available or you wanna replace something or try something new, how do you discover uh, new brands? Um, 
you know, how do you look for new brands? I love this question, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> Who am I going to pick on? Who's been, oh, I could pick on Jose way again. Who's been, how about Wendy? How about you tackle that question? I'm just picking on people I know on here. <laughs> you're, you're muted, Wendy, though. Somebody, Asa just typed in PGA show. Go ahead, Wendy. Oh, you're still muted. <laughs> He's laughing at me. Okay, here I am. Hello, everyone. <laughs> um, I am still getting a lot used to this Rhett Spark. So, um, I'm not sure how to answer that. And if you could just repeat it one more time, because so he's I'm wondering sure how, how, how you go how you go about finding new lines. If you're I looking do, for a new I, company. I actually with Rep Spark, because y'all said there's all these vendors listed. I actually found some through Rep Spark, but AGM, I get it through AGM. Sometimes the reps just contact me. Um, and also I guess a list came out for the who's going to be at the show in Florida so I'll hunt those down ones I'm not familiar with but I I believe I actually saw some new ones through Rep Spark that I wasn't familiar with so and I'm still learning Rep Spark so and then I, I someone contacted me which I thought was great because I think it was Phelan Key that contacted me I found them that way um, yeah, and the AGM has some that I want to try. I want to see about the seven diamonds. I found that through AGM. And swing control, I found them at the show one year. Great. All right. How about um, L'Oreal from PGA? How about how do you go about finding new lines? Hello. How are you? Good. I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? How do, you, how do you go about finding new lines if you're looking for something new? And different? Um, well, I have reps that reach out to me, send me samples, and then I will check them out. Like we just brought in Anderson Ord. Um, we got a couple new lines. But what I've always liked in the past is going to the show and walking around, especially going to the new vendor section where there are new products. Um, so I do like to look there and, but unless a customer comes and asks me about a brand or a rep comes to me, then I don't really go hunting, looking. Right, uh, Sean, okay, thank you. Cause that ties right into what Sean typed in the chat. So Sean, share a little bit more about that for everyone. Well, through the years, uh, during my time at Harbor Point, which again, I'm a small market, Northern Michigan facility, I've had members um, from other parts of the country bring lines to my attention. Uh, many moons ago, it was uh, Walter Genuine Shoes. Um, most recently, Renwick, which I don't know if anybody knows Renwick, but it's a, a ladies uh, shirt company, kind of a cap sleeve. They're great. I mean, I brought them in. Did, after they recommend them, I do a little bit of research on my own, but I brought them in and sold them out like crazy and actually uh, had reordered um, towards the end of the fall. So uh, through the years, I've had great fortune. My members kind of traverse across the country. And so they, they find things that they like at their golf shops and they bring them to me. Hmm. Great. Oh, okay. All right. I'm going to jump over to Tori, who just typed in there, which is a great point. Um, so if you'd share that out loud. Yeah. Hi, everybody. This is Tori. Um, I, so I just started um, at Tequesta in June and I created an Instagram account for uh, our golf shop. We have a, a younger membership who's very social media active. So anything that comes in that's new, I post into the stories and it drives a lot of traffic that day. People come in and they say, Hey, I saw this um, on Instagram. I want to buy it. But what I do for finding new things is I follow other golf shops and I'm always looking for new ideas. And like yesterday, I saw another golf shop had a t-shirt design. So I sent it to Imperial and I said, hey, I want to copy this. I'm going to do something really <laughs> similar with these changes. And I know that sounds crazy, but that's a lot of the times how I get new ideas is seeing what other people are doing. 
Awesome. Did that answer your question, Eric? <laughs> I don't want to take too much time. We can come back to that if we want to go. Back Thank you for the feedback. It's interesting to hear the different um, sales approaches from offline to online and digital and social media. It's cool. Thank you for those um, aspects. You're welcome. Yeah. So that kind of leads right to our next piece as we talk through, um, you know, new brands and and you know a lot of. Um, you said that it was either member driven or sales reps reaching out to you, sales team members reaching out to you, sending you samples, sending you product. Um, so, you know, next we want to kind of talk about, you know, what, it, what the important role of the sales team and the sales reps for the retailers. And, you know, as brands, we need to really be thinking about, are we maximizing the relationships that we have with these brands? Um, there are so many new brands today and popping up and old brands that have been around and I don't mean old, established, um, who are coming out with new product and new things. And, you know, how, what is the, the um, importance of a sales rep reaching out and you know at, at rep spark we really believe it's the three pieces and it's it's part education um, where reps can educate the retailers on the product the brand what's new what the brand's doing marketing wise um you know again social media now is so important what the brand's doing in social that could also drive um buyers into the shop um collaboration the sales teams can be really important and driven with um, simplifying the order process and providing transparency and, um, you know, really providing advice. Reps are able to provide the key insights to best selling products, retail order history, recommendations, et cetera. And, you know, a tool like RepSpark can only help the reps um, go to the next level and take the reps to the next level where they can actually be spending their time doing more of the education and collaboration and advice instead of just order takers where they're typing, um, you know, quantities in and things like that. Um, so, you know, Morgan, how have you seen the role of um, sales teams change, whether it's growing or shrinking or roles are changing? Maybe talk to us a little bit about Link, what Link Soul's doing in this area. Yeah. <clears throat> so I do know because of RepSpark and our B2B access and how we've been able to use it, we only have three reps total. Um, and they are able to cover most of the U.S. I do think now we're wanting to hire a fourth, but we used to have like 30. And so then we'd buy 30 sample lines and salesman samples and all of those things. So since Rep Spark, I know one thing we've cut down on is our sales reps. And we're still, we only have three, like I said, and we're still meeting our same sales goals slash beating them. Um, so that's really been great for us. And then we don't do, we used to do print catalogs for the wholesale, whether they were CADs or real images. Um, we don't do any printed paper catalogs for the wholesale side anymore. It's all through RepSpark digital catalogs. You know, we can make catalogs customized for each ship date um, so people can pre-book and we can merchandise things within those catalogs to make it, you know, sometimes we're sending them to corporate accounts. So that catalog is going to look a little bit different than maybe it's going to be sent to a golf shop. And depending on where that golf shop is around the country, we can really customize those catalogs to represent what they might actually sell in their store. So I would say that's been huge for us as a business to cut back on sales reps and print catalogs and not see a fall in business at all. It just, it soared really. Thanks, Morgan. Um, for retailers out there, you know, are you still seeing the the importance of sales reps and you know getting getting reps to kind of like I said, go to that next level, not necessarily um, eliminating them, but maybe you know some examples of reps that have been on the forefront of education and collaboration and advice rather than just kind of coming in to take an order, which with the digital platforms available today, um, you know that can almost be done on your own. So are there any examples or, or advice even that you have for some of the brands that are on the call of, you know, what they're looking, what you guys are looking for in a sales team interacting with you? Go ahead, Lisa. 
but you need to unmute. I would say most of us would agree that um, just a, a nice person and having somebody you enjoy interacting with, because if we have two brands that are equal, um, we're going to choose, and we can only bring one into our shop, we're going to choose the one um, that has the sales rep that we most enjoy working with. <laughs> Oh, it's good to know personality is still plus these days, even in this digital world. That's so. right. And, and interaction and, and mm -hmm. um, uh, responsiveness. And, you know, usually a lot of times uh, reps that we have, they may carry several brands and, and you know how that, you know how that uh, sales rep responds based on your interaction on the other brands that they carry. So uh, that, um, that that has more than once uh, been a determining factor for me as to which brand I would be bringing in. That's great. Close way. Yeah, I, I would say that uh, an example would be Adidas. I mean, there are a few others that, of course, do this, but I would say that over the last five or so years, Adidas has really improved on this, where they'll have kind of like quarterly updates. Uh, with accounts um, where they bring them up to speed on not only what's going on within their industry, um, new product launches, those sort of specifics, but they also then, you know, allow other retailers in that same sort of setting, like what we're at today, to kind of have an open dialogue about, you know, what, what they're seeing within their clubs, what opportunities are there. Um, so I feel like those brands that do reach out a little bit more to retail accounts um, and just simply call and inquire, ask questions. Uh, those are the brands that I would say that myself and my team seem to engage the most um, because not only are they calling in to inquire how business is going and how things are moving, but they set it up in a way that, you know, you're able to kind of have further conversations like what we're doing today. Um, of what's working at certain facilities, what brands are out there that are, you know, not my, that are new and different that are being considered. So, you know, I do like those uh, partners that do that more regularly rather than just, you know, you know, we will build relationship with our reps. Of course, that's a given when they're coming to visit with us and showing us the line. But, you know, I feel like you, you, you build a better partnership when, you know, you're, you're regularly calling in and I'm not saying like quarterly, but even if it's once or twice a year, kind of having, you know, kind of uh, a group wide conversation about what's going on, what we're seeing, what we're experiencing and hearing it from both sides, not just us, but also on their end as well. I think it's a value. Great. Thank you. Jason, would you expound on your statement that you put in there? You're probably muted. Yeah, sorry about that, team. Um, yeah, no, I've, I'm a big on having the staff here at the club uh, trained in everything that we have um, on our display. So anytime, uh, anytime we can have any one of our reps come in and do a little just go over of everything that's on the floor, it helps them with you know how to sell it and just being a little bit more knowledgeable. Um, a perfect example is we do we're a Titleist only golf shop, uh, so having having our Titleist rep come in right at the beginning of the year and going over the golf balls and what the golf balls do and how to sell a golf ball and, and, and trying to find exactly what um, is best for the customers is just paramount. Awesome. Thank you. Um, Julie, I want to jump over to you, Julie Kaziri. Hello. There you go. Oh, good. You can hear me. I unmuted. Yep. You're good. <laughs> can you ask me the question again? What are you looking for in reps? And you typed in the chat that a rep that responds in a timely so manner to questions. In the, the I typed a little bit in the chat. It's I'm really looking for someone who responds fairly quickly to questions and orders, sends confirmations that communicates. I mean, I don't necessarily have to have someone come here and hold my hand or call me all the time, but I, I expect to someone to let me know when I ask for something, you know? Uh, and then also, we're all in the business of trying to make some money, some profit. And so if they're closeouts, if they let us know when things are happening within their own company, um, this year especially, it was nice to know when things 
got better. I have one rep in particular in Texas who emailed me all the time to let me know about uh, delivery dates on headwear, when we could expect to get product. Uh, and he updated me all the time. So that was really helpful to know how long it was going to take to get product. So uh, someone like that, I think, you know, that, that's uh, willing to work with you and become part of your team, uh, because I do believe it is a team. So perfect. Michelle, she's got her hand raised. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm definitely going to say that I foster and the brands that I bring into the golf shop is definitely based on relationships and to make sure that again, they're your support system, you know, outside of the golf shop. Um, I kind of agree with, you know, some of the other speakers that, you know, training your staff, obviously the people that want to come here and interact with your staff as well, you know, to make sure that they know their product and they know the benefits and the features um, and, you know, why we sell it in the golf shop is, you know, really beneficial, you know, not only to your staff, but obviously to your members and, ultimately you want to make that sale and, you know, get that product in front of your members. Um, that being said with COVID, unfortunately, a lot of this season, unfortunately, and I feel like, I don't know if it's all the Florida, you know, the stock's kind of gone from the Northern States taking it this summer. Um, one of my big complaints, I guess, for this season would definitely have been the lack of communication on where my orders are. Unfortunately, um, I wish that that had been a little bit better, um, you know, kind of getting like double deliveries in October and in November back to back within two weeks. So, you know, again, the communication piece and being part of that team um, is definitely the brands, you know, that I kind of lean toward. Um, you know, anyone can go on Rep Spark and place your own order. Um, but again, it's fostering that relationship. And if I reach out to a vendor and they cannot provide what I need, having them, you know, be confident enough in our relationship and their products to extend, you know, saying, I can't do this for you, but so-and-so might be able to. Um, I had a huge tournament that, you know, Nike has always done, always done the tournament. They reached out to me and said, we can't do it this year. You're going to have to go with someone else. But I appreciate that because they didn't leave me hanging a month before the event. Um, so, you know, just again, that communication piece and, and having someone to turn to is the most beneficial as far as vendors that I pick for the shop. Great, thank you. That's been huge. Um, JD from Two Links, I'm not even going to try to slaughter his last name. He has a question in here, which kind of goes to then I'm going to go to Asa to um, share a response. How important is it for you to see a rep or new product in person versus on Zoom? And Asa, um, you'd put a comment in here on the B2B and learning to use them all and all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to let you share your thing and kind of address his question. And you, I'm sure, are muted. Okay, we're not hearing you, Asa. Are you just... She's unmuted, all right. I think she's not um, <laughs> working. She so Asa, <laughs> Asa had put in here that she agrees that reps are incredibly important, but as brands go more digital, it can be difficult for us buyers to navigate and keep up with the different B2B sites. So reps that know those, the reps learn one platform, but the companies ask us to learn one for each company we buy from, which there's several out there. So that is a, a big concern. Peter, thank you for your comment back to all the buyers about communication and just echoes all that. And then lastly, and then I'll give it back to you because I was gonna ask this question, but Tori beat me to it. Combination of a sales rep and inside sales rep from a company who work together. When sales reps on the road, I know I can call the inside rep. So Tor Tori, would you talk to how important that inside sales rep is as well, and sometimes maybe even a little bit more important and reachable than your outside sales rep? Yeah, for a lot of these, you know, companies that I work with, the sales rep's wonderful. I see them, you know, on a monthly bi-monthly, whatever it is basis, but it's the inside sales rep because these sales reps are out visiting other, you know, other clubs. They're busy. They have a lot going on. They can't always process a special order on a moment's notice. So having that one contact at the actual company. So I always email my inside sales rep and I copy my sales rep. So they're in the loop. It's to me, what makes the, the best relationships with companies is when I have that one, two punch 
um, because if one of them doesn't take care of it, I know the other one will. So for me, I can think of 10 companies that I have that relationship with both the sales rep and the inside. And those are by far the easiest um, ones to work with and the ones that I prefer. Great. And the inside, Megan and your, and RepSpark, you can set it up to email both inside and outside sales rep. As far as the order confirmation? Yeah. Yeah. To actually place so that, orders through it. Yeah. So that would be more, um, Tracy, more orders um, as they're placed going to the golf clubs or the, the retailers. Um, but it can also be set up to um, notify a sales rep if they wanted to do that or an internal sales team as well. Um, but that's more on order confirmations. And something I think is really important that's been a theme um, throughout is, you know, really good communication and correct information and being honest and, you know, just the importance of giving your sales team that information as well um, so that they can share it with their clubs and, and retailers. I mean, there's nothing worse than a retailer asking a question. And the sales rep not having the proper, correct information, whether it be inventory or colorways or size runs and things like that. Um, so just making sure if, if the buyer doesn't want to do it on their own, making sure that the sales reps have access to that accurate, timely information as well. Um, so, you know, it's not four emails later, four phone calls later to get the answer. Right. Um, back to the question on Zoom or in person, um, Debbie Schatzer um, mentioned in here that if it's company she's done business with before and knows the product, she's okay with Zoom, but a new company, I wanna see it in person. And then um, Jason mentioned, if it's quite important to him to be in person, he'd rather be face-to-face. -face. So kind of a mixed bag there, but I think Debbie's probably got the best thing. If it's something you know, you're okay, maybe more okay with Zoom than a brand new land. Cause you wanna feel it. And that's one thing you can't do with Zoom. And I think, um... Tracy, to just kind of move to our last piece is, you know, being able to visualize that line and that buy if you can't be in person, um, you know, having that opportunity to see it merchandise together, um, you know, obviously, if you can be there in person and see it and feel it, that's the best way. But sometimes there's not that opportunity or not that time as often as you would want and, um, you know, really being able to visualize a buy with the different delivery dates or, um, you know, samples are always the best, but if you can't share them, being able to have some sort of video where you can see what that product looks like, you know, as somebody's moving or being able to um, see an up close image of a swatch of a product and also being able to see how a rep or a brand would merchandise products together so you can see if there's gaps in your colorways and things like that if you don't have those samples um, you know again going back to the educating collaborating and guiding so I'm going to turn it back to Morgan and um, you know see if if there's tips and tricks that Link Soul can share of how you're using some of the visual buys through the B2B. Morgan you're muted. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, before I jumped into that, I did want to touch on something we did add to kind of piggyback on what you guys were saying of the inside sales team being important just as much as the outside sales team. When we do get a new account um, brought on, our reps do introduce them to myself and Andrew, which is kind of their inside support. And they let them know I can do inside support of like marketing images. We set, We share all of our marketing and brand images that you see on any platform with any of our accounts. And we do that through RepSpark in the marketing section. And then um, Andrew is our inside like order person. So we do always make sure our accounts have three contacts, the rep and two inside people so that they know whether it's a B2B question, an order question, they have multiple people that they can contact. And I felt like that's helped people use our B2B because I kind of walk them through how to set it up instead of the rep having to do that. Our inside person helps them like get set up with the B2B, teach them how to use it, whether it's special orders or tracking or invoices, just giving them the power to try to navigate that stuff when they can't get in touch with the rep. They can use RepSpark as a tool or they could go to either Andrew or myself internally. So we did implement that not that long ago and it's been really helpful. So I wanted to share that piece of it. Um, 
But moving on to like the digital catalogs and like kind of creating buys for people, I will say our reps do a really good job and try to be super hands-on with their accounts in making these digital catalogs or showing these buys so they can merchandise it for them and show them whether it's like a 215 drop or then like a 515 drop. Like I said, the ship dates always reflect within these catalogs that we build. That's why we like them because we can put this page, you know, everything shipping 215 and it has the date. If it gets delayed, it has it. You can see what sizes we have. Maybe it's like 22 small, 42 medium. Like you can see all of that. So I know our buyers and our reps love using that feature because it kind of gives both parties the tools and information they need for their buys or what's coming. Um, and then I know another one of things that our reps really implemented is helping clubs with like replan. Um, they'll kind of keep track of them and check in on them like once an order comes and a couple weeks go by, like, you know, what's selling through, what can we like switch out? What, you know, you have this coming, do we need to move the date? Um, helping accounts with that kind of stuff has been super helpful as well. Megan, I have a, a question too, and then I've got, um, actually, Peter type in there too. If a, if a buyer is having questions or challenges using a particular company's rep spark, who's their best bet to contact for help? I, this is a Thanksgiving, came up at Thanksgiving at my house from a um, golf pro that was here, and his frustration with a company's um, rep spark and that they'd search the catalog and they're looking for a particular score and they get 80 different SKUs. And, you know, and he said, who can I, who can fix that for me? And I said, I don't know, but well, I'll ask. Um, yeah. I mean, <laughs> sometimes it's, um, sometimes it's how a brand has set up the catalog or set up their products. Um, so definitely reaching out to a sales rep is a really good idea. Whoever okay. their rep is, um, because maybe um, it's set up a bit differently and that usually will make it up the chain. Um, so if that, that retailer reaches out and it's not like a technical problem that we're talking about. Right, right. It's just, a, it's a user needs to know how to do it better problem. <laughs> yeah. Or so, you know, in that way, because brands do set it up a little bit differently sometimes and just maybe making a specific catalog or assortment that only has scores would be super helpful. And it's pretty easy for a brand to do something like that and then share it with that buyer. Morgan, I don't know if you want to add to that, but. Yeah, no, it's super easy to do that kind of stuff. And that's also why we kind of implemented like my role is everyone that has issues with their B2B. They know that they come to me and their rep communicates like, you know, throughout the day, if you're trying to use the B2B, Morgan's your go-to. And I respond very quickly to emails. Like I actually had one this morning. We changed some of our sales reps in like our apparel magic system. And it didn't like right away reflect into rep spark. So when he went to log in, it was saying his profile was like inactive. And so he emailed me, I logged in, like fixed it. And then he was able to log right back in. And so he didn't contact his rep at all for that. Some reps within different companies are definitely trained on how to do that. But we as a company implemented one person to be that rep spark technical issue person, whether it be for our accounts or if I'm doing things in our rep spark, I know who to contact within rep spark for my technical issues. And I will say rep spark is so good about responding with technical issues. You get like a response right away. Usually that same day it's fixed, or at least I have an answer of like what it is and a timeline of when it will be fixed. Um, so that's super nice on our behalf. But to answer your question, I they've made a person within our company that helps with all those technical issues instead of the rep having to do it since they have many other things and they're very trained in rep spark in the back office side for their accounts, maybe not as much in like what the accounts rep spark looks like. So I've been trained in that and walk them through how to use it. They know I try to jump on zoom with our new clients and like share my screen of what they're seeing and show them how to like play special orders, look at those digital catalogs, check at once. Um, and it probably is your person, probably the golf pro that was at your house, maybe didn't know 
the user also can set filters like yes the company sets it up a certain way and that might be why it's happening but he also has the power to kind of create some filters on his side that would maybe eliminate that stuff but it does depend how the company kind of sets it up in the back office okay well that answer that helped a lot thank you yeah so um you know the last piece that we had is just kind of opening it up to which we've kind of been doing throughout, but you know, not really a driven agenda here. Um, and I'm not sure how much time, Tracy, I'm not even sure how long this was supposed to go, but you know, brands, do you have questions for retailers on their expectations as we get to the end of the year? Um, or, you know, retailers, do you have questions or thoughts that you'd like to share? Like we said, it's about half and half how many brands and retailers are on here um, that you'd like to share. So, you know, again, kind of open forum at this point, if there's another topic that would like to be discussed, um, that would be great. So this was to go till three, but it's welcome to go longer. Um, if you'd like to stay on and have questions, please feel free. If not, thank you very much for joining us. We have a few people that had other commitments that had to run already. So anybody that's got a question, you can just unmute yourself and shout it out or type I have it in. a question for people if they wanna answer it. Um, I guess it obviously would be for retailers, but how often do you utilize or do you like seeing like email blast to like you as a buyer about the wholesale business of like sales or like what's going on? Like, do you utilize emails like that from companies or are they annoying or what would you like to see and stuff like that? Good question. I could, I could probably say this time of year when the PGA show is coming, emails get amazingly annoying because there's so many, but you know, you pick and choose. I think it goes to the communication piece, right? And I'll let some of the merchandisers that get a lot more of those than I ever do, but it goes to the communication piece. And if it's important communication, it's always welcome in that. And, you know, people de determine what's good or not. Anybody else want to chime in on that? <laughs> And then I'm going to start with some of these questions. So um, Debbie Schatzer had a question that she said she likes RepSpark to research options for customers, but struggles to create a PDF to email them. Is that something that's doable? Yes, Debbie, I'll send you a quick video on that. Um, I don't have like a demo site up and ready to go, but for sure I can share it with you, Tracy and AGM team, if you guys want to make that available as well. Yeah, I was going to say that might be something that everybody on the call would like to see. So if you'd send sure. that over to Jennifer. Of course. That would be great. And she can send it out with the video. Wendy, did you have a question? Yeah, I tried to send that hand. I am a mess today. <laughs> um, the rent spark, I'm, like I said, I'm still getting used to it. And somebody had put in there, you know, it's a great tool to show to customers. How do you go about to like, or do you even train your staff? Like, my shop staff works like one day a week. I have like a handful of part-timers, but how can you utilize it so the whole staff could use it? Because it, it's a good tool, especially for the customers, but how would you like go about that? Or do you want to go about that? Because I'm not here all the time. Um, I guess when I was a buyer in a country club, I did train our two like part-time staffers when I wasn't there to use our rep spark. And the main reason was because special orders were huge at our club. So if like someone was looking at a pair of shorts and we had the color, we just didn't have the size, that person had the power to log into the rep spark account, see if it was available and order it right then and there as a special order. Um, so I know that was one way, like we as a club, when I was a buyer, utilize other employees besides yourself um, to use it. Um, and then sometimes they also knew how to like look for like a special order. When you do order a special order, the tracking number or if it had shipped, all that information was there too. So sometimes like if I placed the special order for someone on like a Monday and then the part-time person was there on Wednesday and I wasn't, someone's like, hey, where's my special order? Did you order it? That person, you know, without even having to contact me, could log in, see if it was ordered and give them an update of like, yes, it's shipped, it'll be here so-and-so, or it's in process, it'll probably ship out in a couple of days, but then they had the power to kind of update um, the customer. But really the special order and just kind of tracking of 
invoices was how other people within our country club besides myself used it not really for anything else besides that in my personal experience Wendy, we do have a whole knowledge base. I'm thinking, and Tracy and Jennifer, this may be a good idea for us to pick out just some really quick, easy videos, because um, the knowledge base is quite extensive. Um, maybe just some quick, easy videos that we can share, um, you know, with this group or whoever you want of, you know, real quick how to place an order, real quick how to look at invoices and tracking. Um, and that way, you know, you wouldn't, it wouldn't fall on you, Wendy, and your team to necessarily train everybody because um, they don't need to know, again, the part-time people, how to place a pre-book order and look at all this stuff and split the order out. They, you know, they have a, probably a couple different um, smaller tasks that they're doing within RepSpark. So we can send those over as well, um, you know, and just kind of make a little area that's, that's kind of that quick and easy thing. So again, it's, like I said, we have a huge knowledge base. It's pretty extensive. You almost have to you know, know what you're looking for, but maybe just sharing a couple of those smaller, quick videos. That would be awesome. Some that that would be great. Yeah. Okay. That's exactly what would be and Jose's got another question or comment. Yes, just a quick question, and this might have been shared at maybe a previous session, so I'm sorry. But with Rest Park, are you guys specific B to B, or do you guys offer offer a B to C offering as well? Yeah, so um, we're mainly B2B, but as far as in the, um, the, the pro shop kind of um, environment or ecosystem, we do offer an event tool and a special order and pop-up shop tool where your end um, consumer club member could go ahead and order, um, you know, during a pop-up event or during a tournament, um, can go ahead and place their order based on their order number. Um, so that's kind of where we get a little bit sticky as far as um, B2C versus B2B, but it still would be B2B, the club would be getting, um, you know, get purchasing at wholesale with the member purchasing at retail. Um, so we do see the pop-up shops and pop-up events becoming really, um, you know, more and more important and used more often at, um, at, at clubs and pro shops for brands that they're carrying and they may need to do a product extension or line extension of what they're able to offer their members at specific times throughout the year. Great. Um, oh, that's great. Yeah, I would love, I would love to get more insights on that. Um, so yeah, no, I appreciate it. Thank you. Great. That could be a Make future sure session on tournament planning or something. Yes. Um, yeah, Tracy, the tournaments and events and how different um, buyers and pro shops are using those is, is yeah. you know, it's it's insane how that just that area is just growing and how different pro shops are using those. Um, that so, would be a great future topic. Um, it may, or AC just answered, is that feature available with all RepSpark brands or is that up to the brand? It's up to the brand if they want to make that available. Some have different um, strategies of how they're using them, but but ask. I mean, a lot of them. Uh, I would say more and more. And if you ask, they'll probably they'll probably make it available. I can't speak for all brands, but um, Morgan, I don't know. If you That's know. how it happened for us. We weren't like doing it. We kind of knew about it, and then you know, buyers or retailers would ask their rep, like, "Hey, I did this with so and so, and was really cool. Can we do it with you?" And of course, we were like. We'll look into it. So I know we have done a few and we're looking to do more. Um, but yes, that was how it brought up to us as someone was like, hey, can you do this? And we were like, we'll look into it. And it was worth it. It was great. Great. Another question in the chat, um, Christian from JDX um, asked if the buyers like to use the community feature to find new brands. And if so, what things have grabbed your attention or what things have helped grab your attention? That's a relatively new feature. So has anybody used that that's on here? It is relatively new. And just on the RepSpark side, um, you know, it is it is um, new. We're seeing, um, I think we had over 500 um, requests last month of um, access requests, whether it was new brands or, you know, maybe they were carrying LinkSoul already in the pro shop, but weren't necessarily using RepSpark to order. So... Um, just last month, we had a great number of access requests, and we're going to be building out new features with that, Tracy, too, where um, you as buyers will be able to see recommendations and recommended products or, um, you know, uh, things like that. So that should grow and grow. But um, thank you, Christian. Yes. Sorry to open it up to everybody else. Um, you know, 
is anybody using the community feed share or you know needs more information on that? Debbie said she was. So Debbie, would you share a little bit? You're probably muted. Oh, she doesn't Sorry. have a mic. No one has a microphone. Um, so she said to use the community feature. It was fun to see what brands are there, but several are still pending. Yeah, so just as a note to um, brands that are on this call, you should get a notification when somebody requests access and you still do need to approve access to those buyers. So, um, you know, make sure that you're doing that. So people like Debbie and, and some other ones who maybe are still pending access, you do have to end up um, or, you know, accept that access request and go ahead and set those buyers up. So um, again, we wanted to give the brand the ultimate control of who was, um, you know, purchasing through RepSpark but so the brand, it's on you to kind of approve them. Now, Debbie also said she's using the search feature, hoping to see other vendors that she already uses that are now on WebSpark. Now, and Eric wants to know what brand she's looking for. Oh. Keep typing, Debbie. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, Debbie. <laughs> Kristen um, said that it sounds like these brands just have to stay on top of it for their accounts. Yeah. Yeah, you should have one. Um, it's, yeah, it's pretty cool. I mean, we see who's getting searched for too. So um, it, it's kind of fun, fun information too. Yeah. Uh, how do you access community? So um, you can access through community through any one of the brands that you work with. You just request access to one of them and then you have access to all of them. Um, we should be rolling out in the next two or three weeks. You can just request access through RepSpark and we can make sure that you are actually a valid vendor or pro shop that you actually exist we can then grant access. And then again, you would still request access to the different brands. So just because you're in the community, um, you know, the brands still have that ultimate decision of yes, you know, we want you ordering through the platform and seeing our inventory and things like that. But um, it has been super exciting and we're definitely seeing it take off with access requests and, you know, information. And I would say um, apparel is our number one searched product category. So for brands on here, if you haven't filled out your, Profile, um, apparel, and and golf is the number one vertical we're seeing searched. So um, it's pretty exciting. Can you search by if they have stock available to ship to me today? <laughs> no, but that would be an awesome feature. Um, yeah, no, ideas on this would be great too. This is, um, I don't want to say a baby product. It's been in the works for a long time, but the launching and releasing it in the stages is, is um, it's becoming a really exciting part of RepSpark. So, you know, again, anything that, that you want to share as a retailer that would make that better for you, easier for you, um, more interactive for you, what you would like to see, you know, would be great to hear whether it's coming today or, you know, as you start thinking about it and, and moving into um, the community. Now, are you able to see how many buyers are using the search and buy function on their own? Yes, we are. And it is, it's, it's growing and growing. It's, it is exciting. I feel like once a buyer kind of looks for a brand one time, then they come back and they're like, now they're searching or they're searching for a new accessory brand or a new footwear brand or, you know, things like that. It's, it's really fun and it's gaining a lot of traction. And like we said, where the next step of that is going to be recommendations and, you know, kind of a trendy now area where you as a buyer could see different brands that are trending and things like that. I think we created the uh, search for true. It would be withstand the elements, a waterproof knit golf shoe. So that's what <laughs> a waterproof knit shoe. Is that what JT you. would want? Yeah. Who <laughs> <laughs> <He> loves that? <laughs> Funny. But Lisa asked a question. I don't know, Megan, if we got that one. How do you access community? Maybe, um, Lisa, are you logging in from a brand URL or from our app URL? because there is a different way to get the full community. I'm already in and already use, um, I have several brands. I, so I've been finding them through that search bar in the top left. I just, I thought community meant there was something like a community page or something, but I'm good, I'm in. Oh, thanks. I know it's on our URL now on our homepage when you sign in that way, it shows you all the brands as a, um, in the what we call the community yeah that's pretty cool that was session two <laughs> so we'll do an events one next yeah peter go ahead 
as a vendor, do you have uh, analytics and they can look at uh, who's visiting and how often and those types of things? Yes. Okay. Other questions from anybody? Can a catalog be preloaded with a suggested order to send to an account? Yes, a catalog can. Oh, go ahead, Morgan. You, you. I don't want to sell it. You say what you guys are doing. <laughs> oh, yes, and you can make a catalog with anything in RepSpark, customize it to however you want, make it very specified or everything. Um, you can preload it with anything you want and then send them a link. And whenever, like, cause you can do a PDF, but those aren't like live. So when you send the link of that suggested preloaded account, they can click, once they see the item they want, they can see there's this many smalls, this many mediums, this one it is when it ships and when it's available. They have all the information. And if they are set up on the B2B within that catalog that you created, they can go ahead and buy whatever they want within it and add it to their cart. Uh, they can obviously tell you what they want to, but they have the power to go ahead and place their buy from that preloaded catalog that you sent them. So Debbie asked that question that just goes right to that. She's able to make changes or she'd like to be able to make changes to a suggested order, but what they would need to do is just drag it over to actually place the order. Yeah. And I guess it would depend if something they want to change, if it's not even in that catalog and they're wanting to add it, um, it would just kind of depend how they set it up to send to them. Um, they might have to edit it on their end to reflect what you want, but I mean, it is, possible to still like make a catalog or an order to reflect what you actually want. Yeah. And Debbie, if that, if whoever you're talking about, um, you could send, I was just going to say, <laughs> it could create a draft or a suggested draft order. Um, and you should be able to make changes to that. You should be able to log in and make changes as long as it's still on draft status. Um, and I can't think of a brand that's turned that off, but if you want to share again separately, we can ask them why they turn that off. I can't think of one off the top of my head that wouldn't let you make changes. So um, again, I, I, I don't know anybody who would do that, but um, you should be able to make changes to any draft order. Yeah, <laughs> perfect. <laughs> She's gonna be doing a lot of talking after this. <laughs> yeah, there are some benefits that I know sales reps and buyers like when you're sharing a catalog versus sharing an order. In the catalog, you can add your favorites. So if you're not there in person, you can do it online. You can click your favorites, add comments, say, let me know when this is back in stock. So there's some interactive capabilities when sharing a RepSpark catalog different than sharing an order in a cart. Both are very good tools, but the catalog has some additional features. Yeah, the reason I was asking that um, is some of our sales team was looking to use this um, kind of as a way for them to reach out to existing accounts to kind of get them introduced to RepSpark. Um, so it would be almost like to say like, hey, instead of just sending our order form like we standard would, we'd be like, hey, here's what the order would look like, but put into that catalog form. So it's a little more uh, appealing to look at. Yeah, you know, during COVID, we talked, I, I talked to um, a sunglass company and they had opened 30 new accounts without even visiting them um, just by putting together a suggested order, like you said, making a really pretty catalog cover that was, you know, custom to that brand. And then they could just click in and, and place that order for that first time. So. And 100%, I know that's all our sales rep did and do or why they use RepSpark themselves is to create those catalogs and they put our lifestyle branded images in those mixed in with the product. So they're super presentable and seem very catchy and like you want all of it. So I know that's been super helpful for all of our, our reps. And you can do those at the, you can do those at the, you know, merchandise management level where you're creating catalogs and, you know, your reps are sharing those, or we do have a lot of brands like Link Soul that, you know, provide the imagery that they want the reps to use, but allow the reps then to create those custom assortments with a cover for that specific um, buyer. You know, a buyer in Florida is going to be very different from a buyer maybe in Minnesota and what they're buying at that certain time of the year. Um, so to create that custom curated assortment with a beautiful catalog cover is, is, is nice. Yeah. 
they're spending the time, they're spending the time thinking about you. Awesome. Anybody else with other questions? Silence fills the room. <laughs> Let, oh, I'm, uh, go ahead, can I Peter. ask a uh, question? Uh, how many retailers are here right now? There's some uh, Most everybody left on here is retailers. So you've got probably 20 different ones. So if we're a vendor considering RepSpark uh, uh, and not to put the RepSpark people on the, on the spot, but uh, I'm assuming most of you are in favor of that um, is, and it's been a good tool. <laughs> I'm <laughs> just kidding. Go ahead. Everyone can answer. <laughs> Everyone unmute yourself at once and just say yes. And just, and just <laughs> one, yell. Yes. Two, three. <laughs> Peter, I would say based on the number of people we've had attend these seminars that they've done, people love it and want to know how to use it more. So it's a matter of what, once the system's in place, it's just a matter of uh, educating the, the people that uh, are, are executing uh, for the vendor on, on RepSpark. Right. And I think, you know, from a buyer's perspective too, the sales reps have to kind of sell it to them. And I know in my area in Florida, some do a really great job at that and others complain, but they always, you know what I mean? But that, that's just the business we're in. Um, but the sales reps kind of are your intermediary almost with the with the buyers because they're the ones encouraging them to get on. And like Megan sent and, and Morgan as well, once a buyer gets on and looks at one company, they're looking for other companies on there that they can, they like the tool. So they want to be able to use it for a lot of companies. Because yeah. a one-stop shop because exactly. uh, it, it's it, the ease of use and uh, you know, your, the efficiency of using it, I would assume. Yeah. 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 And then Peter, I mean, that's exactly why we partnered with the AGM as well to just help educate and, you know, spend the time. This was more of a panel discussion. The other ones have been more of training sessions, but, you know, making sure that we're in front, we're helping our brands train the retail buyers. We're, we're at the trade shows there helping to train and, and get the retailers on and, and using it because, because we don't want that to only, you know, be your reps or your brand having to do that. And I think as, you know, critical mass starts using it, it's just going to be easier and easier to use it between each brand. And Peter, so, I'll add to that and say, when I was a buyer and I used RepSpark for a couple of my brands and then other brands used a different B2B software. And even when I was on the buyer side, RepSpark was my favorite just because it seemed to be more user-friendly or upfront. The other ones kind of were very confusing. And I like to think myself pretty techy and can figure that stuff out. And then being on the other side of now having RepSpark, I will say, I got frustrated with some brands because their rep spark B2B was better that like there was one was great and the next one was not. And so I were as helpful and usually it was image image based. So like if a company uses rep spark and they don't keep their images updated and that kind of thing, it's not as a, as much of a helpful tool. Um, but if someone is really managing your rep spark, keeping it up to date and using it truly for all of its capabilities, it's really great. But on the buyer side, I did see some brands that didn't utilize it as much as they could. And then I was like, oh, well, that's why I didn't like that experience as much as so-and-so's that used RepSpark. It, it's all how you kind of manage it in the back office. Yeah, I mean, obviously uh, in my former life, not obviously, but in my former life, I was at Carl's Golfland and we use B2B sites all the time from, a, from an efficiency standpoint. And some were not as good as others. Um, some were very poor, in, in fact, or not, you know, not even functional for what our purposes were. But, uh, you know, in your comparison, RepSpark is as good as or far better than many of those? In my opinion, yes. And we, as a company, have tried to search for other ones or like we've kind of even done trainings to give them a go. And there's always been one or two things that like, it doesn't do and rep spark does, or it's like, okay, maybe that one does this, but this one actually is more beneficial for our business. So we have even searched out and at least currently for us, it's not worth it to change or try anything new. And we do think it's at least the best out there. And we've even been contacted by some of our sister companies 
that want to add it now too, because their buyers or retailers are like, why aren't you guys on RepSpark? I, I use it for all my other brands. You guys need to get with it. So I do think it's growing and the more people and brands and businesses that use it, the buyers and retailers out there will become more aware how to use it and it won't be as much of a learning curve. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I think the buyers are talking about it a bit more too. I mean, in, in a great part because of the sessions that, that we've been doing through the AGM and you hear it in conversation at the, at the local shows, it was talked about a lot. So that's getting it out there too. So uh, kind of to add into this, um, for all of you on the retail side, um, when you were first getting going, was there a learning curve? And then if there was, was there anything that kind of helped that to kind of mitigate the issue and make it easier to digest? <laughs> they all go quiet. There's been uh, so many people on these sessions that I think there, there was a learning curve, but I think people are, feel probably more comfortable the ones that have participated in these you know, definitely. Yeah, because I was hoping to have something to to say, like, all right, if, if it helped them when they were getting set up, it could be something that we can try to implement to make it easier for, for the new people coming on. Because for the ones that are using RepSpark, it's really not difficult because you're just adding a new brand and just seeing the way that they're showing their catalogs. Whereas yeah. a completely new person, it could take them some time. And I feel like there's definitely some things that can be done to make it easier for them. Yeah. So I would, um, you know, Debbie, I, actually, I would read, poor Debbie's going to be talking to everybody. I'd reach out to Debbie Schatzer at Hallbrook Country Club because she's been the one typing in quite a lot, but mentioned that the workshops have been wonderful. Somebody else, Asa, said, for me personally, I was against using it until the training sessions. So it's the education process, like any new system, right? No one likes change in new systems and all that. And when you learn to use them, then you want more of it. Tracy, and there's, there's a place they can go on AGM, right, to get the past webinars or anything that we might be sending to you. Is there a place that they can go or we can make a place um, for these retailers to go with specific, you know, shorter, quick cut videos? Yeah, that's a, that's a Jennifer question. And unfortunately, she had another meeting to go to, okay. so she left us. Um, um, I know I that... There is, there is. Jennifer and I work, are working together to give snippets of these webinar pieces for you guys to watch. And just to answer your question, Christian, we have customers of ours that create like email sequences and personalized videos to walk their buyers through. Like they are interacting like, hey, we're this ABC company and you know, this is how you place an order. And like they customize their own um, tools to showcase and that's been really successful for them. But yes, Jennifer and I are working together to have snippets to share on the AGM site and the RevSpark site as well. So right. I will also share that information with um, the team at the AGM. And so you, get, you guys can have access to it. I know the videos are will be sent, the, the chat of this or the recording of this will be sent to everybody um, that registered and then is on the AGM YouTube um, channel, which members have access to. Which would mean, of course, our vendor partners as well. Yep. Hey, Tracy. Uh, it's Jennifer. I just wanted to add. Uh, I'm sort of new to RepSpark. I've used it um, for with about three of my brands, and I really enjoy using it. I didn't have training, so I sort of just learned it on my own. But I will say, you know, some people are reluctant um, because it takes away a little bit of a personal touch from actually seeing your sales rep or being with them when you write the order. But if the sales rep knows how to use it and knows how to use it correctly, it can actually add to the personal touch. And I'll just use LinkSoul as an example. I was on it the other day and I started an order, but I couldn't finish it. I had to leave and go back and I actually got an email from my rep and said, hey, I saw you started an order. Do you need help? And that to me was really personal, a really good way to use it from the rep side, as well as um, just from the company standpoint. Jennifer, can I ask you who the rep was so we can- Michael. Get Okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> yes, great. Has anyone, um, has anyone in the buyer side used this use case? I'm a big proponent of mobile. So the mobile application for RepSpark, maybe I'm doing a pitch for it now, but um, if you've used it in this, in while in a retail situation, the word I want to use is client telling. So if you're looking for something, a one of your best customers comes in, he's the board member of your club, and he's like, I need this uh, medium-sized shirt. 
uh, before Christmas and it's not available, you know, the medium sell out and you have on your mobile, your app with your brand and you look it up and you're, e you're able to say, yep, I can place that order. We have three in stock. Um, is anyone using mobile right now that way? And, and in particular, the RepSpark mobile or you'd like more information on it. But yeah, I think mobile is great. Debbie tried, but had trouble. So she would like more information on it. So can you include that in our videos? <laughs> Absolutely. That could be another topic altogether. Downloading it now. Lisa's downloading it now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Love great. it. I'm and sorry. Morgan guys, email in the chat. Because you guys can continue to. I thank you so much, Tracy and everybody. I'm so sorry. I need to jump for a 1230 um, <laughs> meeting, but continue if you want. Eric and Susan are here on the RepSpark side and um, can continue any conversation. And Morgan, obviously, on the brand side can continue any conversations that you guys need. Thank as you well. so much, Megan, for doing this for us again. And have, enjoy your next meeting. <laughs> thank you. Bye. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, some of those questions, I've used the mobile application in the field, and um, I think we've improved some of the stability issues with it, with syncing the files, because it was originally built as an offline application, meaning it downloads the entire inventory onto the phone. So yeah, switching back and forth, if you're not updating your synchronization, um, yes, it can get out of sync then, but um, that's why some of the some of them download and sync in in seconds and some of the brands it takes minutes and we're working on ways to simplify that by um only taking a snapshot of the data not as much data as it's loading right now so yeah the performance will get better and i used it that way and i also talked to someone at the show they want to have scanning capabilities in it which i think is really cool um that would come later. That would be on the, the future list that Peter was talking about with embroidery. So that would be on that list. Um, love to use it that way. Slow and load and a bit cumbersome. Okay. Yes, the load time, that's what I was referring to with the syncing, depending on which brand and how it was set up. So we are addressing that um, as well. Yeah, so I'm really excited that you guys had so much value from the past couple of webinars and, you know, we want to continue this education session. So I'll work with Jennifer to send out some questions to see what you guys would like to hear more of. I definitely wrote down about event microsites and pop-up events, and I definitely want to say a special thank you so much to Morgan and the team at LinkSoul for joining today and answering our questions. I appreciate your time. Uh, this extra time and all of you guys for staying extra. So thank you so much. And that is our webinar for today. <laughs> all right, guys. Thanks, everyone. Have great holidays. Yeah. And we'll yeah. see you all in person at the PGA show. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> all righty, everybody take care. Thank Bye. you all for the invite. Have a good day. Thanks. <laughs>